begin the service today with seeing number 325, the solid rock. an announcement in the beginning of the service we will have our Monday night meeting our business meeting that we have once a month we'll be here tomorrow night at 8 o'clock and you're all welcome to be here the song there that we sung there I don't know if you noticed but at the end of the chorus there it said <laughs> amen and to solid the solid rock Christ is that solid rock and all other ground it says is sinking sand and do we all this morning understand that and are we all in a condition that we can say amen that we know that as a truth we have accepted that that he is our rock and he is our foundation that we can build eternal life upon through Christ Jesus through the blood of Jesus Christ as he hung on that cross and as he died, so that you and I can have eternal life today. That should be what is on our mind this morning. And I'd encourage each and every one of you this morning to let's get Satan out of our mind. And if there's anything there that is trying to t carry us into some other condition or, or get our mind somewhere else except on Christ Jesus, that solid rock, then that is Satan that is doing that this morning. 
So let's ask the Lord for help, for guidance, that we can sit here today and that we can hear his word and then we can apply it to our own individual self so that then we can use it for eternal life. What a wonderful day that will be when we see Jesus, when we meet him face to face. As the song says, as he takes us by the hand to lead us through that promised land, what a day, what a wonderful day that will be. And that is for all the righteous. And that is, who is the righteous? It is all of those who ask, and they ask right, and they are able to receive of that spirit. And then we can be there with him at that wonderful day. But it will be a sad day for the wicked, for those who are deceived, for those who do not let our Lord and Savior be our master and our king. Our Lord, he will be the one that is over us in all things. He will be the one that will direct us, our thoughts and our words and our deeds. And if we do that and get ourself out of the way, our will out of the way, and let his will be done, then we'll be able to stand with him. And that's what we all should be striving for this morning, is having faith in Jesus Christ. That's the first and the foremost part, is having faith that he was the Son of God and that he can save us from our sins and that he will be with us until the end. He will never leave you. We might leave him. And we might go away from him. But he will be there as long as we desire him, his spirit, to be with us. He will be with us. And these are encouraging words for us all this morning to think about. That it is that free gift that he is offering to all of mankind today. And I hope. And as I know that we went over last Sunday, these questions were asked about, do you truly know that you've got that power, that you have eternal life within you, and you have that spirit of the Holy Ghost dwelling within you? And if you don't, if you don't truly know that, flee to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and he can give you that. He has promised it that I'll give to all of those that ask. So be sure that we know where we are spiritually. And don't let Satan cast you down. Don't let Satan tell you that you need to go and do this or that. There's What our Lord says is repent of your sins and ask him to be your Savior. And then he said, to be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And then let that Spirit come within you and be strong. There are so many encouraging things that we can read throughout the Bible that can help us on our journey, that can show us the way and see, us, see what others have done. Let's read... Turn to Psalms. I want to read the 27th Psalm. It's a very encouraging Psalm to me. And this is what David had to say many, many years ago. But he's... <clears throat> The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And I want us to all just take heed to those, those very first words that was said here today. Is the Lord your light and is he your salvation? 
That is the question that was just talked about a moment ago. And if that's the case, if it is, whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength and my life. Shall, of whom shall I be afraid? If he is there, if he is our master, he is our king, who shall we be afraid of here? Nothing, not even anything that Satan has to bring against us, spiritually or naturally, whatever it might be. The Lord is the strength of my life. And I want that to be the strength of my spiritual life, first and foremost. And that is what we all need to be seeking for today. When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. When Satan comes at you with all the trials and all the temptations to try to get you involved in things, wherever it is, if we will use the power of God, if we will use that spirit of the Holy Ghost, then it can overcome it. And Satan is a failure then in us. He cannot overcome you. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise up against me, in this will I be confident. All the things that was brought against David there, naturally, spiritually, whatever it was, if he held on to that spirit and he held on to the knowledge and the faith of Jesus Christ or faith of God in that day and in the faith that there would be a Messiah coming here to the earth for all mankind he could have full confidence that God would lead him through whatever was brought upon him in that day one thing have I desired of the Lord and that is something I want us all to think about right here today one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his provision. In the, in his, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Set us upon that rock, that solid rock of the foundation in our day of Jesus Christ. But he, was, he is there. But he said, there's one thing, one thing that I have desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. And then what is that one thing in our day today? What should that be in our mind? The one thing that we're desiring it's for Jesus Christ to be our Lord and our Master. For Jesus Christ to be our Savior. For Him to lead, guide, and direct us. And if we do those things, He says, that will I seek after. Is that the things that we are seeking today? He says, seek ye the things above. And he says all these other things will be added to us. And we have gone over these things constantly in the last while. Are we seeking him? Are we seeking his will? Are we allowing Satan to steal a march upon us? Are we allowing Satan to just carry us to and fro wherever he might want us to go? One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, and he shall set me upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. And are we crying to him? When we see how undone we are and how weak that this flesh is, 
He says the flesh is weak, but he said the spirit is willing. And the spirit is able, the spirit is strong. And he can be right within you and right within me. And he can make that flesh as strong as it needs to be to let that light shine and to let the glory of God be right within you. He says there, in time of trouble, he shall hide me. And then he goes on and he says, and now shall thine, mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. And he will lift us up above Satan in all things. And I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Is that on our mind? Is that what we desire to do throughout the day? What is upon your mind? What is the God's that is there? Is the God that we're talking about here? Or is it the gods of this world? Hear, O Lord, when I cry with mine old voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. And I know he will. He will answer us. And he will have that mercy. That mercy will be forever with the righteous. But that mercy will run out with the wicked. And they will be cast, he says, into that lake of fire with Satan and the false prophet and all of those that are liars, that are murderers, that are thieves, all of those who did not accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. They will be cast into that lake of fire to be burned. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face. My heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Now that is something there that I know that needs, that every one of us needs to give that our attention today. I know that the Lord has, is asking that to be done with all of us to seek His face, to seek His will, to seek Jesus Christ in all things. Now, where is your heart? What is it doing? David said here, he says, When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Now, is that what we are willing to lay aside? Is that what we are willing to do above all things here today? Is to seek him? Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not. Neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my mother, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Whatever might happen here upon this earth, if we are walking with him and walking worthy with him he will take us up even if our family forsakes us whatever it might be if we're walking with him he will lift us up <coughs> teach me thy way O Lord and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies teach me thy way Lord Teach me the way that you'd have for us to go. That, should, that is what we all need to be asking here this morning. That plain path to eternal life. To be asking, to be led in that. Deliver me not over into the hand of mine enemy. For false witness are risen up against me. And such as breathe out cruelty. I have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And today, we might feel like that we just need to give up. But if we know and we can see the hand, the power of the hand of God the Father through Jesus Christ, we can move on and we can have strength and confidence to move on in that and not faint in work, not let Satan overcome us, don't let him continue to have you put off things that you know you need to do. 
to get right with our Lord and Savior. He says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now listen carefully to that. He says, when Satan tempts you, when you look around and you see things that need that Satan is trying to overpower you with, he says, wait on the Lord. He will give you the knowledge and he'll give you strength, as he said, and he shall strengthen thine heart. And I believe these things. I know that these things are true if we will hold on to them. And he says, I say, Wait on the Lord. Just wait for Him. Don't be quick to say things. Don't be quick to anger. Don't be quick to wrath. But wait upon the Lord. And He will surely give you victory in Jesus Christ. Give you victory that you'll be able to stand and that last and that final day to see him and to be with him forever and ever. The sting of death have no power over you. But we'll lay this body down and we'll awake in eternal life. Isn't that a wonderful thing to think about this morning? And to know and to know that you and I have that opportunity of knowing that. And we have the opportunity of accepting that. That we can have eternal life through him. There is no other way, none, but through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let's turn over into the New Testament there. And I have opened here to Galatians. And this is the third chapter of Galatians. <coughs> oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. O foolish Galatians, he said, who hath deceived you? I believe that these people Paul had maybe preached to them before, and now there was some that was going away. There was some that had been deceived and that maybe had brought in other doctrines there other than what Paul and others had taught. And he just begged it out. He says, O oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? That you should not obey the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. That work of his was set forth here upon the earth. And we have we were not there. We did not physically see it. But we can read and we can have faith <coughs> that he he brought he was here. And he brought forth the work of God here upon the earth and he fulfilled the law of Moses. And he brought in the law of grace that then all, man can, all men can have that law written in their hearts, in their mind. They can receive of that spirit of the Holy Ghost and have the law of grace in their heart to lead, guide, and direct them in all things. <coughs> this only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. And I want us to all understand today 
if you've been able to receive that spirit, how were you able to do it? By the works of yourself or by the receiving and hearing of the faith of Jesus Christ? And that is the only way that we can receive it, is by faith of Jesus Christ in him. But there was some there, and he says, Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Are you now made perfect by the flesh? That spirit is what will make us perfect. It is not how your works will be. You and I can never do a work that's good enough to inherit eternal life. But we must be strong in the spirit and must be strong in the faith. And if we are strong in that faith, then we'll be able to receive all that we need to overcome Satan. Have you begun in the spirit as he said these? And then he asked that question. He says, are you now made perfect by the flesh? We are made perfect by the spirit of God the Father, by the Holy Ghost. Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? Have you started on that journey and now being deceived some? And is your work in vain? He therefore that ministered to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? How do these things take place, he said? As those that ministered unto you, and I believe Paul and the other people there, the other apostles and, and ministers in those days, they were the ones that were ministering to them in the Spirit of God and the Spirit of the Holy Ghost that was rained out upon the people in that day and can be rained out upon us in our day. He says they, that was what was ministering to them. Now he says now, and that spirit was working miracles among you. And what's the greatest miracle that could be worked and has been worked in people ever since Jesus Christ was here upon the earth? That greatest miracle is having, becoming that new man, that Satan being cast out of our natural body and out of that spiritual soul. And receiving that new spirit in our soul. That is the most wonderful miracle that could happen to any of us. And how was that done? By the works of the law or by hearing of faith? And we all understand today that it was not by your works. And it wasn't by the works of you trying to keep the law, which nobody would try to do today Maybe maybe some that still proclaim to be a Jew, but we would not try to keep the law. We know and understand that Jesus Christ came to fulfill that law. And now we are under the law of grace that we can receive by the hearing of faith in Jesus Christ. By the hearing of it and then having of that faith. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of, the, of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseed that God would justify the heathen through faith. Preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. And all these things coming all the way down. And look at what the faith that Abraham had. in what God was telling him to do. The promises that God had told to him. And he knew that he, whatever God asked him to do, I will do it knowing that God will still comply with his promises that he has told to me. Whatever he asked me to do today, don't try to look down the road and say, well, wait a minute, this is going to interfere with what the promises of God have been. 
It will not. God's promises will lead you to victory. Now let's keep it in mind and let's walk with him. Walk worthy. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for that the just shall live by faith. And Abraham was victorious in, in the deeds that he did by having faith in what God had promised he was able to do and he would do. And you and I today can have faith that what Jesus Christ has promised to us, that if we will repent of our sins and ask him to be our Savior and ask him to come into our life and to give us of that spirit of the Holy Ghost, we know then that those are the promises that he has left for us and that we can have it. It is that free gift. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth upon a tree. Christ overcame all things. The curse of the law, the curse of sin. All of these things, he overcame it by hanging on that cross for you and for me. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. I want you to just think back there, just as we've talked about other times here, but think about on the day of Pentecost what took place. Here was a few of the disciples of God, the disciples of Jesus Christ, that was there. They had gathered together maybe in one place there. And God was with them through Jesus Christ. He had promised to them what? He says, tarry ye here around Jerusalem for a few days. Until you be endued with power from on high. Until you have been able to receive the power that I am about, that I have been telling you, that you would be able to receive after I am gone. I was, he said, I am going back to my father's house. But I will send to you a comforter. He had promised those things. And then he told them what to do. And here this group of people was gathered together. And the Spirit of the Holy Ghost comes and rests upon them. How did it come and rest upon them? Because they had full faith that Jesus had promised these things. He had told them something to do. And they were obedient to his calling. They were waiting. They were doing what he said. And that Spirit came upon them all. It was sent by God the Father through Jesus Christ. And then what did they do with that spirit? Did they take it and carry it and go away and do nothing with it? No, they allowed that spirit then to begin to talk right out of their, right out of their heart to whoever and wherever the people were the wonderful words of life to all the multitudes that were around them, to all the people that was there in that town. They spoke to them the wonderful words of life. And what is that? That's that spiritual life that they were able to bring forth. And the miracle of God then was able for every man to hear it and to understand it. And that is what I want us to all know today, that everyone that is here today can hear the truths of God, can hear the promises, if they truly want to hear it. And you can accept it. Those people heard it, and there were some that rejected, but there was numerous ones that accepted it. As this is the truths of God. And look what it is doing. Look at the miracle here that is being done here. And they were able to accept. 
that spirit. And then go on. Letting the spirit direct them. <coughs> go on and being victorious in the work, in the truth of eternal life. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannul disannuleth or addeth to. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one. And to thy seed, which is Christ. And that was where the promise came through Jesus Christ for us all. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before, the, before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul, that it should take the promise of none effect, that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. And he promised that there would a Messiah come through his lineage that would be here upon the earth. He says, wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator for one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid, for if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been given by the law. But that wasn't the case. It was not something that could be given by our works. It had to come through the faith of God. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. The promise of faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that do what? Believe. Is that within our realm of thoughts and is that within our heart today? Fully believing upon him. And this is what Paul was wanting to get across to these people. To don't be deceived. Don't let somebody else tell you something that you've got to do. It is by faith in Jesus Christ that you are saved. But now I'm telling you, it does not stop there. That spirit then that he gives to you, if we truly have that, we will be able to walk with him. We will then be able to do a work that's acceptable. We will lay aside the sins and the weights that will so easily set us apart from Jesus Christ if we let that spirit dwell strong within us. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. He just keeps bringing that over, by faith. That is how we're justified. That's how we receive it, by having faith in God the Father. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. And after we have received that faith, he says, and he was talking to these people in those days, trying to get them away from the law of Moses. But in our day, it is faith that will keep us away from the things, the lust of this world. For you are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. And that's the part that we all want to be a part of. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. That's the key. And that is what we all should be searching and seeking for this morning. 
For as many as you as have been baptized unto Christ have put on Christ. Now what's he talking about there? For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. If we have followed him, if we have followed the things that he has asked for us to do, repentance, receiving the Spirit, and asking Jesus Christ to be our Lord and Savior. That's what he is talking about, and then being baptized with the water in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, the Father being over all, and the Son here upon the earth for us. When he came here and he overcame all things for us, he, the Son, the advocate between us and the Father, the mediator between us and the Father. And he says if we have done that, then we then have put on Christ with that Spirit. Those people there that received the Spirit on the day of, of the Pentecost there had put on Jesus Christ, that Spirit. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Do you understand that today of what the spiritual part is? That it doesn't matter who you are, what color you are, where you came from, whether you are male or female or whatever it might be. He says you are all one. If we've accepted the Lord, he says you are at all at one with him and you're all a part of his work, a part of the true church of Jesus Christ. Now is that the part, that spiritual church? Is that what you and I are seeking after? Is that where we know that we are today without a shadow of a doubt? That ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Heirs according to the promise that I will give to you, all those that ask. That's that first promise that we can receive. <laughs> ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. Those are the promises that he has for us all. And keeping in mind that we're all part of that. And if you be Christ... Then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons and because ye are sons God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying Abba Father now is that what has happened to all of us today wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son and if a son, then an heir with God through Christ. Think about that. That you and I can be an heir with Jesus Christ in the Spirit of God to the kingdom of God. That we can be an heir of that. Not just coming up as a servant or whatever, but we are a son of God. Just as Jesus Christ was a son of God, when we receive of that spirit, then we have the same that Jesus Christ has. 
And that's what he's saying here. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart. Crying, Abba, Father, Master, Father, our Lord and our Savior. Is that within us today? Examine yourselves and see, friends, these are the truths of God that Paul was trying to get across to these people. He was earnestly preaching and teaching to them so that they could understand what they needed to have eternal life. And that is what was happening here today, that these things are earnestly being taught to us so that we can understand what we must do here upon this earth so that we can walk with him and walk worthy and we can be an heir and a son of God. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. How be it then, when you knew not God, you did service unto them, which by nature are no gods. But now, after you have known God, or rather known of God, how turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto you desire again to be in bondage? Now Paul is just pleading with these people to don't go back into the things there of saying that you've got to worship and, and keep the law. It is by faith, and that is what our Lord is doing for us in our day as he is saying, don't go back to the lust and to the things of this world to serve them, but to be strong in the Spirit. Strong. And don't go back into those things. For now, after that you have known of God, or rather known of God, how turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto you desire again to be in bondage. And are you wanting to be in bondage of the things of this world? How it will drag you down, how it will elude you in the end, how you will leave these things of the world all here. There is nothing that we will take into eternal life but the spirit that is within us. That soul is all that we have that will be able to carry, to, to take us across into eternal life. Now where are we desiring the things of this world or are we desiring eternal life? Are we desiring to walk with Jesus Christ? You observe days and months and times and years. I am afraid of you lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. And has the words of God been in vain to us here as a group or to you individually? Paul just was very plain and clear to these people. I'm afraid of you. Why? Because he could see them trying to go back into things of the law instead of just knowing and understanding that it is by faith in Jesus Christ that you are saved. Lest I bestowed upon you labor in vain. Brethren, I beseech you, be ye as I am, for I am as ye are. You have not injured me at all. You know how that through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first. Paul just making it very plain and clear to him. He says, I want you to be as I am. Walk walking in the truth. And he says here, he says, you know how that through the infirmity of the flesh, through all manner of trials and temptations, I preach the gospel unto you at the first. And my temptation which was in my flesh, you despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus he says, you received me because you saw that the Spirit was working within me and you, you wanted to receive that at that day. Now, have you gone back? And if that is the question that we need to be asking ourselves today. Are we allowing Satan to pull us away from the things that we have one time felt very strongly and adhered to? Are we allowing Satan to come in and get between us and God the Father. 
He says, Where is then the blessed blessedness you spake of? For I bear you record that if, any, that if it had been possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and had given them to me. It's what they had such great love for Paul and could see the power that he had and what he was doing for them. They showed great love to him. How is it in our day? And I therefore, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? And am I become your enemy today because I tell you the truth? Let's don't let Satan get in and divide us. But let's have a way that we can discern the truths of God. And Paul was warning these people. And we are being warned. Am I therefore become your enemy, he says, because I tell you the truth. He was telling them the truths of God so that they could get out of the condition that they were in and get back on that straight and that narrow path that leads to eternal life. That's what he was trying to get them to do. He says, they zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that you might affect them. But it, is, but it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing. And not only when I am present with you. He says you need to be zealously affected in the work of the Lord daily. Not just when I am here. Not just when we come out here to hear the word on Sunday morning is the way we would look at it in our day. But we need to be constantly thinking and constantly zealously affected by the word of God, by the word of Jesus Christ in you, friends. And you need to be looking to him. He says, not only when I am present with you. He says, my little children of whom I travail in birth again, until Christ be formed in you. He's talking about that spiritual birth. And he looked upon them as little children. And he says, I will work. He says, I am travailing. I am preaching and teaching and earnestly desiring to see these things. And I will work in the birth again until that birth of the Spirit be fully in you and all of those that are struggling spiritually today to understand his truths. Remember, ask and you shall receive. Go to wherever you see fit, to someone that might can help you on your journey here upon the earth. He says, I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. And that is some here today that I stand in doubt of where their faith is. And I do not say this downcasting anyone. I say this to encourage you, just as what Paul was saying there, to look into your own condition. And to be strong, he says, I desire to be present now with you and to change my voice for I stand in doubt of you. I don't want you to see the urgency of these things in my voice is what he was saying. is what he would love to be able to do so that you could understand that it is by faith in, in Jesus Christ. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? Do you not know that the law spoke of a Messiah coming was what he was saying. And for us today, do you not hear the spirit of the Holy Ghost within you? That spiritual law written on your heart. Can you hear that? Do you have that in your knowledge and your understanding? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by the bondwoman made and the other by the free woman. But he who was of the free bondwoman was born after the flesh. And if we try to be born spiritually by our works, 
That is the same thing that was done there. That was not by promise. That was by the flesh is how that took place in that day. But he of the free woman was by the promise. And if we receive that spirit of the Holy Ghost, it will be by the promise, not by your works. Now your works have to play a part of it. And that is by going to Jesus Christ and accepting him. That is works, friends, in you. He will never just push that spirit upon you. He will never just give you that without your asking, without you going to him and submitting to him, submitting your life to him to come in and overcome all things for you. And he says, now, he who was of the bondwoman was, after, was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman was by the promise, which things are an allegory. For these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth unto bondage, which is Agur. And this, for this Agur is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that bearest not, and break forth and cry thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of the promise. Now are you a child of the promise today? And that promise is this. We'll go over it again. The promise is this, that I will send a Messiah to the world, Jesus Christ. And he'll overcome all things and he'll be put to death. And he'll hang on that cross and pour out his blood for your sins. That's the promise. And he was resurrected to life for you. He was brought back to life. For you. Now where are we standing today with him? Are we free? Are we born by the promise? Have we had that new birth? That spiritual birth? And are we born in that promise? But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit even so it is now and the flesh will be persecuting the spirit that righteous spirit within us satan will be there now the more we resist him the closer we can draw to jesus christ and the more we resist him the more he has to flee he cannot stay if we resist him but he says there, but as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now that the flesh is at war with the spirit. But what does he say? He says, now, the things of this world are enemies of God. Now, let's get them out. We don't want to have that battle going on within us that there that Satan is there trying to deceive us draw near to him and he'll draw near to us that is what God is telling about his son nevertheless what saith the scripture cast out the bondwoman and her son for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. And that's what he's telling for us to do today. To let the spirit of the Holy Ghost cast out that bondwoman, the one Satan, that has you bound spiritually. Satan is the one that you were born bound spiritually. Now let that spirit of the Holy Ghost come within you and cast out that Satan spirit. That bond woman, that bond of being bound to eternal damnation. Now let Satan come in, and, or let the Spirit of God come in and cast that spirit of Satan right out of you. 
just as the bondwoman had to be cast out and could not inherit, be a part of the inheritance of Abraham in that day. She could not be a part of that. That son couldn't. And there is none of us, if we are bound with Satan, can have a part in the inheritance that he was talking about a year a moment ago, that we can inherit and be an heir with Jesus Christ as the Son of God. As long as that spirit of Satan is within us and we are bound with that, then we will have no part of the kingdom of God. But we can be set free, friends. Be set free and be a part of the free spirit of God the Father sent by His Son here on the earth. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Now, what's the case with you and I this morning? Are we apart? Have we been set free? Are you free in the spirit today? I know you can be, and I know it's offered to us all. Stand fast. Therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I want you to listen carefully to that. What do you want to be a part of today? He says, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And if you aren't free today, if Satan has still got you bound, take it to the Lord. Take that burden of sin and leave it with Jesus Christ. Put it at the feet of the cross, the foot of the cross there. And be free. As he said there, he says, stand fast in it. You've got the opportunity. You know how, if we've listened, he has told us exactly how we can be a part of that and put off that bondwoman and be a part of the free woman, the free spirit. And then he says, stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Hold on to that spirit. And then what does he say there to it? He says, and be not entangled again. With the yoke of bondage, don't let Satan bring these things into our life and deceive us and get us bound into eternal hell through that again. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. If you try to be justified in the things that the law said must be done in that day. He says, you have fallen from grace. You have not accepted it or either if you are now going back, you are fallen from that. Don't fall. Stand strong in the face, as he said. Stand fast in it. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Wait for the hope of righteousness. Remember that. Hope of righteousness. He didn't say religion, but stand fast in the hope of righteousness. And that's what we need to be seeking for, that we want to become righteous in our works. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything or uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. And circumcision was by the law. And he says that has nothing to do with it anymore. He said it is by faith in Jesus Christ which worketh 
by love, by having that pure love for God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. That is what will work eternal salvation in us. You did run well. Now listen to what he's saying. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? He says, you started off. You run well in the beginning. He says, now who has hindered you that ye should not obey the truth? Now is that within us here today? Have you started on that journey and now Satan deceiving you and trying to pull you away? That is what was happening here. And Paul was warning them, he says, now who has talked to you or who are you following that you should not obey the truths of God? and are being led off into something different. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. He says, God is not the one that is bringing this out to you. He says, this is coming from somewhere else. A little leveling, leveling the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. Be careful. Be careful, friends, of where you, what you listen to. The Lord has brought these over and over and over and over to us. Be careful where you go. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you listen to. Satan is a deceitful being. And he will deceive you and carry you right into eternal damnation. And I, brother, I'm sorry, I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. And I, brother, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then it then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would that they were cut off which trouble you. For brethren, you have been called into liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But by love serve one another and use that liberty which you have been called in today. That free agency that you have, use that that you might walk with the Lord. For brethren, you have been called into liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word in this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one another. Be careful of the things that you do and what you say. is what he is talking about. And do not let Satan consume you. And do not let the things that people might bring against you consume you. But keep your eyes singled upon the Lord. And walk with him. This I say then. Walk in the spirit. That ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And that friends says it all. Walk in the spirit. That you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And I know that is as strong with us today as it was in those days of them wanting to fulfill the law, wanting to go back under that bondage. And Paul warning them very strongly about it. And we can be just as much go back into the bondage of the things of this world as Paul was warning them there. He says, walk in the Spirit. In the Spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth after the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. 
And these are contrary one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Listen carefully. The Spirit lusteth against the flesh, and the flesh lusteth against the Spirit. Now which one will be strong? He says the Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But the Spirit is willing to be strong within you. And he said, I will give to you that spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind that we can walk with him. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's what he's talking about. Don't fulfill. Don't let that be fulfilled in you. But if you be led of the spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murderers, drunkards, drunkenness, revilings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you, in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I want us to understand these things fully here this morning, friends. Does not matter. People say that, yes, I prayed a prayer and I accepted Jesus many years ago. And now if I am out and I'm involved in all this kind of stuff here, I am still saved. That is a lie that is being told to people today. We've got to pray that prayer. But then we've got to let that spirit be strong. And that's what Paul has been talking about all the day that we have been reading here. That that spirit be strong within you that will keep us from this type lifestyle. He says, now the works of the flesh. And he says, now we've got to overcome the works of the flesh by the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. And he goes back and he tells us now all the things of the flesh. These are the works. And he went over it. And go out and look around throughout the world today and see how, how this is being rampant throughout our world of people there Involved in adultery, fornication, and uncleanliness, and lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strifes, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like. All of these things, he says, and anything that is like this, anything that goes against what the Spirit of God would have you to do in your flesh. And he says, Of which I tell you before, and have also told you in times past. And I know that has been brought out here before and in times past over and over. And these, he says, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, which such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we are of Christ, we have crucified that flesh. We have it under control, as Paul said, that I have to stay under this body and bring it unto subjection. And he's talking about bring it in under and unto the subjection of the law of God, the law of the Spirit. That's what he was talking about, and that's what we must do here. But the, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us walk in the Spirit. He says if that Spirit's within us, if we've accepted it, now let us walk in the Spirit also. Let us don't be involved in all these things that he was talking about up here. But that Spirit there will have love and joy and peace and long-suffering, gentleness, 
goodness and faith, meekness, temperance. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, Restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Have that love. And he says, if you see a man, a brother, or whoever, overtaken by Satan, he says, you who are spiritual, ye who have... Received of that and have that knowledge in you. He says, restore such a one. Help to restore them in the spirit. Go to them in love and in meekness. But he says, now consider yourself also in these things. And don't go and be drugged down and be tempted into the same thing. But be careful. Encourage one another. And let's all of today think about what has taken place. That the Lord has laid it out very plain and clear. That we must have faith in Jesus Christ. But then we have to follow through with his commandments. By allowing that spirit then to walk and to work strong within us. And his commandments has told us, when you see the truth, ask to be forgiven. Ask that Jesus Christ be your Savior. Have faith that he is your Savior and that he will save you. Have faith and be strong in that and ask to receive that spirit. And be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And be a part then of that spiritual church of Christ. Be a part of that. Isn't that a wonderful thing to think about today? That we all have that opportunity to be a part of that. And then to be encouraged with each other. By knowing that at that final day. That when the dead rise, when the Lord, that great sound of the trumpet comes, and the Lord is descending from heaven to come back here to get all the righteous, and the dead in Christ rising to meet him, and then we which are alive and remain, if that's the case, that if we are alive here upon the earth at that time, will be able to rise to meet him, to be with him and the righteous forever. And he says, comfort one another and encourage one another with these words. And I want you to go away today encouraged. And if he has brought things that has pricked your heart, pricked your conscience, let's be as Paul and say, what is it, Lord? What must I do, Lord? And the Lord will be there, and he'll show you. As he told Paul, go, and I'll show you what to do. And he had it all laid out. And Paul went down, and he followed the commandments. And God sent a righteous man to Paul. And was he was able to be baptized and he was able then, his, the scales fell off his eyes, and he was able to immediately preach Jesus Christ and him, the Savior of the world. And I know that that's available to us, that power, that knowledge, that understanding is available to all that ask and all that want it today, friends. Take it to him. And ask, and you shall receive.
we'll sing number 194, Prepare to Meet Thy God. And there may be someone here that would like to commit to that. And you can do so as we sing number 194, Prepare to Meet Thy God. That song should be ringing in some people's heart today. Are we a careless soul? Are we allowing Satan to just carry us away? And are you not hearing the invitation? Oh, prepare to meet thy God. We're going to meet him. Each and every one will meet him. Then you'll see your sad condition unprepared to meet your God. Careless soul, oh, heed the warning. 
The warning is there. And if we don't take heed to it, we will be lost. For your life will soon be gone. Oh, how sad to face the judgment unprepared. Why so thoughtless are you standing unprepared? If that is the case with anyone that is here today, and I know that there are people here today and under the sound of my voice that have not made that commitment to the Lord, and you are lost. There are people that are here today that has made that commitment, and they are saved. And I know that the Lord is offering it to us. Don't come up at that final day unprepared. Let us pray. To God the Father, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, be with all those who are troubled today to help them to see and to know where you are and what you will do and what the promises of God through you, Jesus Christ, are and how we can accept them and how we can receive them through you and no other way. Lord, we beg for help and show us how we can encourage one another in the truth how we can be strong and bold and face Satan down at every opportunity and be able to do all that you'd have for us to do, Lord. Whatever it might be, show us and give us knowledge and strength to walk with you. We thank you for what you have done. We thank you for the words of life. We ask these things in your name, Jesus Christ.